Oh, okay, good afternoon. This is the third installment of Light on the Yoga Sutras uh, by Patanjali. I'm trying to do something with the lighting here. I got a big lamp off to the side here. Um, that's why uh, this this side of my face is all lit up and this side is all dark. But we'll, we'll try to get it together, eh? All right. Um, so I know it's kind of painfully slow, but uh, we'll, you know, we're going to get through the foreword today, and then we'll go into the introduction. We'll try to do the introduction in one day. I'm going to start reading ahead and trying to, um, you know, condense stuff so we can move along. So I highlighted some passages from the introduction by Godfrey Devereaux. And um, so I'm just going to read it to you. Um, in his unique investigation of alignment, Iyengar not only reveals the therapeutic necessi necessity of structural integrity in the body, but also its subtle and equally necessary impact on the flow of energy and consciousness in the mind. You might remember the other day when I quoted verse 2 and 3 of the Yoga Sutras by pa of Patanjali. Um, and in verse 2 he says, Yoga quiets the mind in verse 3, he says. Um, and when the mind is quiet, it can settle into, your, into one's consciousness or the Supreme Self. So this is why Iyengar, you know, really places emphasis on making sure the body is properly aligned. That's Iyengar's whole thing is alignment. So, um, and that's what the poses do for us. So he continues, what Iyengar has proved for those willing to apply themselves to test it is that the apparent divide between matter and spirit, body and soul, physical and spiritual is only that, apparent, very key. This is very key. If I guarantee you, if you do what I've done, which is yoga four or five times a week for three years, you will know that with your life. Um, through his insistence on structural integrity, he has opened a spiritual doorway to millions of people for whom the mind would otherwise never give up its subtleties. Very true. Here in his presentation on Patanjali, that door is flung wide open. Ooh, sounds exciting. And finally, the last sentence that I highlighted in the, in, in the introduction, to practice yoga without the profound and panoramic inner cartography of the Yoga Sutras is to be adrift in a difficult and potentially dangerous ocean. So, this sounds almost like a warning, right? Well, yoga does release prana, and if one is not careful, one just says, oh, I'll try some kundalini yoga because I want to release my kundalini. You could release too much kundalini and end up blowing your mind, literally. Um, so, you want to be really careful and with yoga because it does release energy. Inner cartography. Cartography is another. Fa it's a fancy word for map making. Map map making. Uh, I guess today's a modern day equivalent would be GPS. So um, the Yoga Sutras by Patanjali really give us a nice cognitive map of how yoga works for us. How do we, as human beings, unite with the divine through our practice of yoga? And remember. Yoga is more than just the asanas. Now, I promised you that I would go through the other uh, five or six uh, limbs of the eight limbs. I'm not going to bore you with that this time. You've got the chart. You can look at the chart. And really, you know, it's a lot to take in all at once. Uh, for right now, if you're a new student of yoga, just pick one of those limbs or one subset of the first two limbs and focus on that. Make that your practice of yoga for now. All right, so I went a little over yesterday. Um, today I'm going to go a little under. Um, but before I do, I'm going to look up some quotes uh, from actually from the Bhagavad Gita that I want to leave you with that I hope will somehow, you know, inspire you, give you something to chew on. 